Hello, Year 6, and welcome to Lesson 2. Before we get into the main body of our lesson, let's test our understanding of our prior learning with our knowing more and remembering more. So, on arrival to the Caribbean, enslaved African people were separated from their families and sold to the highest bidder. Is this true or false? Number two, what was the name of the large farms used for growing crops to sell? Plantation, estate, middle passage, or indigo. Number three, name the first black woman to write and publish an autobiography about her experiences as an enslaved person. And finally, number four, why was life expectancy on plantations for enslaved people low? Remember, if at any point you need to pause this presentation to complete your tasks and to-dos, you must do that. How did you do? Remember to correct your responses and to self-assess. Here are the key words that we already know. Enslaved and plantation. The words that we are going to meet in this lesson are the words revolution, resistance, independence, and liberty. A revolution is the overthrow of a political system or government by force and the setting up of a new government in its place. Liberty is freedom from being confined or controlled. Resistance is to fight against or to oppose another. And independent is not ruled by another, something that rules itself. For our second lesson, we're going to be seeking to answer the question, how successful were enslaved revolutions? So our success criteria to answer the inquiry question will be, I can understand that enslaved people across the Americas and Caribbean fought for freedom. I can identify the key figures in the slave revolt. And I can explain the significance of enslaved resistance to the abolition movement. Here, pictured above, is an image of Saint Dominique, which is now known as Haiti. Haiti is a small island in the Caribbean. Uh, it was the most, most prosperous French slave colony which produced sugarcane and coffee. Here is an image of the Pathéon, which is an important monument in Paris, and it's the final resting place for many important French figures. What does this memorial tell us about Toussaint Louverture? The translation of the memorial is combatant for liberty, craftsman of the abolition of slavery, Haitian hero died in deportation at Fort de Jure in 1803. He is remembered in an important place for significant people, which shows that he did something very important. Liberty, like we talked about before, means freedom and combatant means fighter which suggests he was a freedom fighter. A freedom fighter is someone who fights for freedom. What do these representations tell us about the significance of this Toussaint Louverture? Here we have a statue and a monument of him. And at the big front of that, you can see some people bowing and showing respect, as is this lady here. Again, we have a bust of him. And we can see on the bus that he was born in 1743 and died in 1803. And our final bit of evidence here is a book called Black Spartacus, The Epic Life of Toussaint Louverture. What did these representations tell us about this man? Talk to your partner, discuss here if you need to. <clears throat> People are bowing their heads in reverence, which shows he is highly respected. There are a number of statues and busts suggesting he is a significant person. And biographies and historical books have been written about his life. This tells us he took part in significant events. Here's a direct quote, something that he said himself. I was born a slave but nature gave me the soul of a free man. With your partner, I'd like you to discuss what you think he meant by this. 
Pause here to do that. What can we learn about Toussaint Leverture from these sources? Have a look at the images in front of you. What can you see in the images? I'd like you to pause here to discuss with your partner. If you're at home, like me, you can just have a think for yourself. Have a look at his uniform, look at his surroundings. What is he having in his hand? Discuss with your partner. We can see that he's wearing a uniform, which tells us he's involved with the military. He seems to be instructing troops, so that could tell us that he's a leader or was a leader. He is on horseback and looks like he's charging into battle. Here's a book which details his life. This is a biography. Spartacus was an escaped slave leader in a major slave uprising against the ancient Roman Republic. While he was alive, Toussaint Louverture was called Black Spartacus. Using these historical clues, what do you think Toussaint Louverture is known for? Brothers and friends, I am Toussaint Louverture. Perhaps my name has made itself known to you. I have undertaken vengeance. I want liberty and equality to reign in Saint Dominique. I am working to make that happen. Unite yourselves to us, brothers, and fight with us for the same cause. That was written in, in the 29th of August, 1793. Francois Dominique Toussaint Leveur was a Haitian general and the most prominent leader of the Haitian Revolution. As a leader, of the growing resistance, he helped transform the slave insurgency into a revolutionary movement. For remember that the word revolution means to overthrow a current government. Let's have a look at a timeline of events. Before we do that, have a look at the image in the background. What can you see? What do you notice? In 1798, the British negotiated a truce with the Louverture, promising not to return to Saint Dominique. In 1791, the slaves in Saint Dominique rose up and attacked their masters. Toussaint Louverture emerged as a leader of the rebels. Over the next few years, the enslaved revolutionary army fights against French, Spanish, and British colonial forces. And in 1794, the French government officially freed all enslaved people in its colonies and made them full citizens. 1801, Louverture creates a constitution for Saint Dominique. This frustrates the French leader Napoleon who sends troops to take control of the country. In the constitution written in 1801, it says, there cannot exist slaves on this territory. Servitude is therein forever abolished. All men are born, live and die free and French. In 1803, Toussaint Louverture stood down his troops in exchange for the guarantee that slavery would not be restored. However, he was betrayed captured and sent to France where he died. Jean-Jacques Dessalines, Louverture's general, takes over. He leads the army to success. On the 1st of January 1804, Jean-Jacques Dessalines declares independence for the new state of Haiti. Haiti was the first state to be founded and ruled by former enslaved people. Your first task, why is Toussaint Leverture a significant historical figure? I want you to think about what he wrote on the 29th of August, 1793. And in order to help you complete this task, you might need the words revolution, leader, resistance, and liberty. Pause here now to complete this task on paper. Your challenge is to describe why the Haitian Revolution was a significant historical event. 
you are going to answer the questions, how would they have supported anti-slavery sentiments at Britain at the time? And also think about in what ways might abolitionists have used this event to support ending slavery? Your word bank, revolution, leader, resistance, and liberty. You may use these words to support you in completing this challenge. Pause here now to complete this. The Maroons were enslaved people who had escaped. They ran away from the Spanish-owned plantations when the British took the Caribbean island of Jamaica from Spain in 1655. They fled to the mountainous areas of Jamaica, where it was difficult for their owners to follow and catch them, and formed independent communities as free men and women. Here's your second task. Your inquiry question is, why were those benefiting from the slave trade and plantations afraid of the Maroon people? There were many factors and reasons. With a partner, create a diamond ranking the importance of each possible factor. Explain why you chose the most and least important factors. And then you're going to describe why you've done that. Here's an example of what your diamond to rank your statements are. And here are our statements. The first one, the Maroon villages were a place of refuge for runaway slaves. Plantation owners believed the island to be their property and it belonged only to white people. Plantation owners held racist views that all black people should be enslaved. The size of the Maroon population grew and they soon needed more land to sustain their growing population. Slave owners believe that the Maroons represented a symbol of hope for the slaves who were still in captivity. Slave owners thought that the Maroons' independence reduced the property value of their own island. Maroon attacks often burnt plantations and property, causing financial loss for the owners. And some Maroon groups deliberately planned and carried out missions to, enslave to free enslaved people. So, choose the most and least important factors. Pause here to complete this activity. During the 1730s, the Maroons were formally at war with Britain. In 1739 to 1740, the British government in Jamaica recognised that it could not defeat the Maroons. So the British government of Jamaica offered them peace treaties instead. However, resistance to slavery in Jamaica did not end. The Christmas Rebellion was an 11-day rebellion that started on the 25th of December 1831 and involved up to 60,000 of the 300,000 slaves in Jamaica. Enslaved workers demanded more freedom and a working wage. They took an oath to stay away from work until their demands were met by the plantation owners. The rebellion exploded on December 27th, when slaves set fire to Kensington Estates in the hills above Montego Bay. The reaction of the Jamaican authorities was brutal. Over 500 enslaved people were killed. The financial costs. After the rebellion, property damage was estimated to be 1 million 154,589 pounds, equally roughly 52 million in modern terms. Thousands of rebels had set fire to more than 100 properties, destroying over 40 sugar works and the houses of nearly 100 planters. Task three. Historians believe this event happened helped the campaign to end the slave trade. Talk to your partner. Using this source, can you think of reasons why? Again, historians believe this event helped the campaign to end the slave trade. Why do you think this is? Discuss with your partner. During the late 18th and early 19th centuries, the slave revolts grew bigger. Many enslaved people who rebelled were killed, but despite this, resistance to slavery continued. Those resisting slavery made it clear that if they were not set free, they would soon free themselves. 
Many people disgusted by the humane treatment of enslaved people and inspired by the resistance began to campaign to bring about the ab abolition of the transatlantic slave trade. Let's Let's test our knowledge. Let's see if we can match our definitions to our keywords. Here's our first definition. The overthrow of a political system or government by force and the setting up of a new government in its place. Which of our words in the word bank describes this sentence? Freedom from being confined or controlled. To fight against or oppose. Not ruled by another ruling oneself. How did you do? Our future learning. We've learned about this so that we can understand how the enslaved resistance inspired people to campaign for the abolition of the slave trade. We've also learned this so we can understand how resistance alongside abolitionists of African descent dispelled misconceptions that white people held about Africans at the time. See you next time, Year 6.